Hello everybody, my name is Vega, and welcome to the Trucking Empire DOT Guide. So before you set out in your record to go and help people, you need to know how the controls work. So we're going to review those right now. Obviously you know how to drive, but do you know how to operate the wrecker? So we're going to go over all the menus that pop up when you press these buttons. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way real quick. First off, most importantly I say, are your outriggers. These stabilize your vehicle and allow you to lift things and pull things with the winch without your vehicle moving or in this case flipping over, which trust me, does happen. You have extend left and right, which will extend them left and right. Not actually necessary functionally, but it looks nicer if they're spread out. The deploy button, which if you sit in your vehicle and press it, it'll actually work, will lower the outriggers to the ground. They'll make connection and they'll actually anchor to the ground properly. For some reason, this does not currently work when you're standing outside the vehicle. So just remember to always sit inside. And you can even test it real quick by trying to drive. It's probably the easiest way to find out if it works or not. Our outriggers are deployed. If we ever want to, you know, reset them, just quick reset. Next we have the lift, which unfortunately doesn't actually work at the moment, but if it did, this is how you're really supposed to tow vehicles. You can unfold it to lower it, extend and retract to properly align with the bottom of the vehicle you're trying to attach to. Strap down and release, I'm actually not personally sure what these two buttons do, waiting for an update from the developers on that one. But of course, reset will put everything right back where it was. Uh, try to ignore that. <laughs> the crane. If you understood that reference, you get bonus points with me. The crane. This is part of what's going to do all the heavy lifting. So obviously the menu will pop up. Up to raise it up. Extend to let it extend out. You can also go left and right. Try to do one thing at a time so the crane doesn't go in too many directions at once. You might confuse yourself or the crane. So this thing will go past, um, how do I explain this? I'll just make you watch, actually. To that point. So, even with the vehicle facing this direction, you can still almost get something that's fully in front of the vehicle. That's as far as it goes on both sides. And then again, reset will eventually get it all the way back around, back to its prime position. And last but not least, the winches. Yes, you heard plural, because boom! Check that out, rainbow, right? So yes, you get four winches, and they start to come out from these four colored points, so obviously the color corresponds. Let's focus on one, just so we don't get confused. So we have the red line here. To attach to a vehicle, or in this case, an inanimate object, that'll allow us to attach to it. Click attach winch. You can press X to cancel if you don't want to, but if you do, click the uh, thing you're trying to attach to. From there, you can winch in to pull it in or pull yourself in if you're not anchored. Ha ha, that's why outriggers are important again. Winch out to give some slack or to lower and attach to let it go again. And that's pretty much it. Now that we have our record, we're ready to go. But where are we going? Well, we're looking for calls, of course. People might need help. How will we know, though? Well, that's easy. All they have to do is press this button here, select the kind of emergency they're having, and... Well, well, well. Speak of the devil. Let's see what's going on. Okay, whoa, whoa. I think we're just gonna sit back and watch how these guys work.
Right now, the workers on scene are trying to figure out the best way to position themselves for the lift. Positioning is key in getting a vehicle out of any situation, so this is a good example of them trying to get into the right position after arriving on scene. They took time to analyze the situation, figure out what would work best, and now they're going to try to put it to use. So we're just here watching DOT do their thing. I'll talk to you about what's going on so you guys have a better understanding. I was going to do a rescue myself, but we have a perfect opportunity here. And this is just some traffic going by. So right now the wreckers are deploying and getting in position with their cranes to lift this truck out of the water. Now it took a while to set up here, I'm sure, because it's already dark and it started when uh, the sun was still up. So while the operators of the tow trucks do their thing, there is also a DOT unit here. This is a traffic unit, it's typically the Hilux. This is the only one that has the arrow board sign that functions. That's gonna be a whole other section of the video, so we'll get to that later. Right now we're just watching what a typical rescue looks like. You have cones positioned properly to block one side of the road. We don't wanna to try to block traffic. And if I look over, these guys are starting to attach their winches, as we saw from the earlier part of the video, to try to pull him out of the water. We're actually going to go down there and take a closer look at what's happening. Right now, the driver is still in the vehicle. He's just going to sit inside while they pull him out. And they've got two winches already attached to the trailer. And we're going to see how they proceed with this rescue. While the two operators on scene work to figure out the best way to pull the truck out, I'll take this time to discuss the best lift points on the vehicles. So for the tractor, it's usually going to be the steer tires on either side, the hood, the roof, and the fifth wheel, if you're familiar with the anatomy of a typical truck. For the trailer, it's a little difficult. You typically, most of the time, we click the middle, but I recently discovered, thanks to one of these guys here, who I'll shout out later, that you can actually hook from the kingpin itself, the part that sticks out that the fifth wheel actually latches to whenever a trailer is coupled. So that's the latch point as well. And you can also latch the trailer tires, although that can be a little difficult. Um, if it's attached like this, I would say one of the best methods I've seen work is to drag the vehicle out from the front, trying to keep it level as if it was trying to drive up on its own. But in this case, the winches are trying to pull it up. However, I'll probably do that as a little demonstration later on. I just want to see how these guys figure it out first. And now we're here in a good position watching their progress. It looks like they've gotten the vehicle up towards the top. However, they have one problem. I know you guys can see that right there. Looks like the trailer has flipped and clipped into the ground, but that is okay, it is still savable. We're just gonna see how this progresses. Normally I do a lot of these rescues and I know how to get out of these situations, but I wanna see how these people do it. Looks like we're going to have a success in the books here. And they've gotten the trailer on the road. That's good. Now if they could just somehow flip it. Oh, oh, oh. I think they got it. That, ladies and gentlemen, counts as a success because they got the vehicle but ah, they got the vehicle back on the road and it looks like all they got to do is straighten it out and the truck can drive off. So that is a win for the DOT team. And hopefully this guy will learn how to slow down for curves a little better, huh? Now we can take that second to go over the DOT Hilux. The DOT Hilux's best role is probably going to be for traffic direction, as well as escorting some oversized loads, but there's other vehicles for that. This is specifically a DOT vehicle right here. So I've respawned it so I can show you turning on the lights from fresh, all right? Pop in real fast. Obviously, you're going to notice this thing first when you hop in the vehicle. This panel will pop up. This is how you control all the flashing lights, the sign in the back, and all that good stuff. I'll just to press L once to turn our low beams and our tail lights on. So if I try to activate any of these, you see they're not going to work, right? You have to press power button first, and everything will turn on. So this is obviously your light bar on top. This is your siren. That's a click once to turn on, and then click again to turn off. It'll stay on if you want it. So turning these lights back on. Green, I believe, activates uh, a set of flashers somewhere that I keep forgetting. Or oh, actually, this one does too. Okay, so this is what activates these flashes in the front. You got like a white strobe here, and then your headlights do that. This one will illuminate your arrow board, which we'll talk about now. So this button here, click twice, you get right. Turn it back off. Click twice, you get left. So obviously merge to the right, merge to the left of the vehicle. And this one here, 
is basically one that's telling people workers ahead, and I believe it's saying uh, speed limit 30. Uh, I don't know if that's miles per hour or not, but I'm going to assume for this case it is. Yellow will illuminate this even brighter, and you see that also turn these lights on. I don't know what these three do. I have, I've pressed them like a million times. I thought maybe they were supposed to be some kind of uh, scene lighting, you know, light up the directions it's facing, so front, left, and right. But that doesn't seem to be the case. This is the most light you'll get out of this vehicle, in addition to maybe keeping it in reverse and now you get a little white in the back. But that is the Hilux, and again, use this to steer traffic over a lane or to mark that something's coming up, you know, help communicate that to any drivers going down the road. And that, my friends, concludes this tutorial. Now, I've showed you as much as I can think of, but it's probably still not enough. You will still struggle as you start. It'll take a while to master the equipment, but once you do, you too can be hauling some of the heaviest loads in the game. Also keep in mind that as the game gets more updates and mechanics change, some of this information may not still be true. Maybe there will be another video, maybe not. But just keep an eye out, talk to your fellow operators, and you too will be on your way to helping people that have, you know, horrifically crashed in a hundred thousand different ways, right? But until next time, guys, also look out for that day in the life video of DOT Life here in this game. Goodbye.